What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about how to use the new Skydio 2 keyframes feature for time-lapse photography. If you're new here, welcome to Life of Acro. I'm Acro Brandon and this is my life. So we are talking about how the keyframe feature can be used for time-lapse photography. So what I showed you is just a couple examples, not the most epic yet, but there are some things that I've learned. If you haven't seen my other video talking about how to actually use keyframes to get creative shots, I'll put the card or the link or whatever above here so you can go back and watch that because I'm not going to walk you through step by step on how to get a time lapse photo slash video with the Skydio. I just want to talk more about the concepts and the ideas and the things that I have learned that might help you progress and be more successful quickly. Okay, so first and foremost, if you've never really explored time-lapse photography, I highly recommend that you take a moment to practice and play with it, whether it's with a GoPro or whatever action camera you have, or even your cell phone, using that to uh, understand and explore time-lapse photography on a stationary device before putting a drone up in the air because it's only going to make it a little more difficult to really find and uh, craft your creativity to get great shots. But with that being said, the first time I ever played with this thing for time-lapse photography, I was in San Diego and I put the drone up. The uh, winds were super low, of course, because San Diego is always super nice. And I was trying to catch a really nice sunset. Unfortunately for me, what I found was that when the drone is up in the air hovering, that I just do not feel like it is stable enough to get really good aerial footage from one position, a fixed position only. Even in post-production with stabilization, it was still real shaky. It was kind of up and down and left and right. It was just not a product that I was proud of. However, with the drone on the move, we can actually get something really creative. So with some of the shots that you saw, I mapped out a sequence and I had it kind of banked to the left and to the right. And then with the one where it was like in New Haven, it was like an oil field or processing plant. I have no idea what the fuck it is, but <laughs> right. But I had it pan up and then come around through a big U shape and then come back around from the sides. So what are some of the things that you want to keep in mind when you're trying to get timeless photography with the Skydio? So the two things to keep in mind right off of the bat are how fast do you plan on flying the drone from point A to point B? And what is your photo interval going to be? Now, as of currently, at the date of this recording, right, your options are two seconds, five seconds, and 10 seconds. It's not bad. I wouldn't mind seeing like a one second interval. And if they could just split the difference between five and 10, that would be a nice little compromise as well, but whatever. And then depending on what you're shooting and for how long, the speed of the drone will dictate how dramatic the time lapse is going to look. I personally like the two second interval. That's gonna give you the most amount of shots for the amount of time that it's flying and it will create a smoother effect. However, if you were to do something at five to 10 seconds, it's gonna have more of a dramatic effect. Speed is going to look quicker when you turn it into a video. This is good when you have things like maybe waves or clouds in the air or like a sunset of something like that. It's gonna make the sunset look quicker because it's taking a picture every five to 10 seconds instead of every two seconds, which means it's going two and a half to five times faster of speed, right? And then not to complicate things, but then once you start to lay them out into uh, your video editor, let's say Final Cut, because that's what I use, right? Are we gonna use 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second? Oh no, it's starting to get more complicated. Let's just focus on the speed the drone moves and how many pictures we're gonna take. So you are going to have to explore it and see what works best for you. However, with time-lapse photography, usually you want some type of motion within the scene so that you have that interesting effect of time-lapse. So that would be things like clouds in the sky, like I said, or maybe having waves, or if you're somewhere around people, you can see cars or people moving at an accelerated speed. So some of the shots that I got were when it was a clear blue sky and there were no clouds to give that dramatic effect. Effect. Yes, it was moving quickly and that was okay, but those are some things that I might shoot for when I start to do more of this type of stuff with the Skydio. But the real big takeaway here and my number one recommendation, I don't have like a top 10 list of everything that you should do to be epic, right? Practice and play, right? These are just more like shorthand notes. But the thing I noticed the most when using keyframes to create time-lapse video photo type of stuff was to try to reduce the amount of camera 
uh, adjustments that you have between point to point, okay? So as you're flying around a curve, instead of having the drone constantly wiggling to the left or to the right or changing elevation up or down or changing the camera orientation up and down, try to minimize that as much as possible so that way when it plays back, it looks smooth like butter instead of something super jerky because it is accelerated, which you're watching with the time lapse, you're gonna notice these big fluctuations up and down, which didn't look so subtle to you when you were mapping out the keyframes, but when you do the playback, this is when you see it, and then this is where you're like, that sucks, I need to go do it again, and then you don't wanna do it again, and you're gonna chalk it up to experience, okay? So learn from my experience so that you can be more successful sooner because maybe you only have one chance or a couple opportunities while you're in a specific area to get that shot, and you're not gonna be able to come back for a second or a third or a fourth try to get it just right, right? Okay, so probably spend all your time locally, yeah, learning how to make it happen and get it smooth so that way when you go on vacation or you're on a trip or whatever and you're trying to capture something awesome that you can get it done, one and done and done, right? Cool. So hopefully this long-winded rant helps you become more successful at using the Skydio 2 keyframes feature for time-lapse video photography type of stuff. If you're new here, once again, this is Life of Acro. I'm Acro Brandon and this is my life. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you all in another video.